Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I'm doing an unboxing of Rebel Fury Battles of the American Civil War. This is by Mark Herman. He's back again with a new series, the Civil War Heritage Series. This is Volume 1. Also, it's from GMT Games. So, Battles of the Civil War. This has Fredericksburg, Chancellorsville, Chickamauga, Chattanooga, the Wilderness, and Spotsylvania. I believe I had a grandfather that, that perished at Spotsylvania. This is, like I said, it's a new series, and it is, Solitaire is set at a five, so you could true solo it, probably playing both sides. There's probably not a lot of hidden information, hopefully, but uh, complexity is only a three, so, you know, do what you will. It says Rebel Fury is the first volume in Mark Herman's Civil War Heritage series that will eventually cover every major battle from the American Civil War. Rebel Fury is a refined version of Mark's 19th century low complexity game system as featured in C3I magazine, magazines Gettysburg and Waterloo designs. In this system, you are placed in the role of the notable Army commanders Grant Lee, Longstreet, Jackson, Sherman, Thomas, Pope, Bragg, Rosecrans, Burnside, Sedgwick, Cooker. From America's War Between the States, Rebel Fury is not a traditional hex encounter game where each side moves and attacks in sequence. Instead, Rebel Fury captures the flow of interactive maneuver where the points of assault are driven by your decisions, not the system. You are advantaged if you can turn your opponent's flank while controlling the tempo of the battle through a more efficient maneuver. Very interesting. So there are six battles in this volume. So let's dig in and see what it looks like on the inside. All right, here we go. It's not a big box. It's you know, one of GMT's standard size boxes. And there's a lot of space in here, so you got room for a counter tray. If a counter tray will hold all the counters, but if not, you have a bag of bags that GMT's famous for. We have three dice, two thin-sided, one custom six-sided die. So the two blue and the gray obviously are going to be the north and the south and the north winds two to one and then we've got this custom die here that's got see we've got uh looks like a, a infantry and then some hit signs we've got three hit signs and three infantry signs it looks like yeah one two three one two three so we got an infantry all right and the next up we've got our playbook and we'll see what kind of playbook this is. This is on GMT's wonderful matte-coated stock. And in this case, the Rebel Fury is, uh, excuse me, the playbook is the scenarios. So that's cool. Rebel Fury, Fury scenarios use core rules with some minor special rules. So we'll have the core rules coming up, and then this we'll have the special rules for each battle. So this is uh, 24 pages and pretty much covers the setup through page 21 and then designer's notes on 22. Tells you where everybody sets up. It's got hex numbers, so the maps will have those numbers and then the basically the setup. So we'll look at Battle of Chattanooga here. November 23rd, 25th, 1863. Use the Chickamauga Chattanooga map. Uh, six turns, November 23rd a.m. to 25 p.m. Artillery points. Union and CSA each start with 19 artillery points. And the game begins with the movement phase. Special rules for that, the victory condition, and then where the units will set up. So that's the playbook. We've got the rules of play. It's also a small little book. It's also 24 pages. On the back, we've got a summary, sequence of play, and how to resolve an attack. And then this is the rules. So, as as per normal, it starts off with a rule with the uh, uh, information about the game and then uh, the components, how they're set up. So here's how the markers are defined: counters, zone of control. There are two different size units in Rebel Fury. That's interesting. Divisions have a large counter. And detachments have small counters. So that's interesting. So a detachment exerts a zone of control around the six hexes. And then the larger counters have zone of influence and zone of control. So they can, they can control a wider area 
or influence a wider area, I should say. It's interesting that the counters, we'll see them more when we open the counters though, do have the formations depicted on them. That is pretty interesting here. So it starts off with key concepts and definitions. So as we saw the zone of control, and it says do not use traditional movement points, but hexes of movement. Divisions can be in one of two formations, maneuver or battle. So if they're in battle formation, they can move one hex. If they're in maneuver formation, infantry can move four hexes, along road eight, cavalry move six, along road 12. Another key concept, the only units that move across the hex grid in Rebel Fury are division units represented by the larger size counters. Detachments cannot move, but are placed during the command phase. So there's a lot of changes to our traditional thinking of of uh, Hex and Counter War games. So that's, that's kind of interesting to see how this plays out. I've not played any of the aforementioned magazine versions. So then we've got a whole section here of definitions from artillery to union, which we kind of all know what that one is. And what else we got going here? Sequence of play, command phase, organization phase. Not a lot of, not a lot of graphics in here, there's color. Uh, play notes are in this kind of gold color. Design notes are in the beige, tan color. And then now here's some graphics with some examples. Here we go. This is a movement example. And then optional analysis, paralysis, stalemate rule. Each player makes 20 consecutive moves without a division from either side entering a zone of control, then in the movement phase immediately. Use the moves remaining counter to keep track. That's an optional rule there. Design note, this rule should never come into effect, and hence it's optional. It's basically a variant of the chess rule. On two rare occasions, I've seen players adamant that they were not going to pass. Both players just push the same unit back and forth in a classic I'm not going to blink standoff. While I found it amusing, the rule is aided to maintain the pace of play. Attack, uh, we have mandatory attacks. There's three situations where units must make mandatory attacks. Very interesting. And end phase, more examples of play. So you get a lot of, uh, you know, rules, text, a few graphics, and then example of play built right in. So that's cool. And then that goes through page 18 where we have additional rules. So I would assume that the additional rules are optional. Because otherwise they'd just be part of the rules. And then we get to 10.0 with the victory conditions for all scenarios. And then there's the game credits and an index to help you find anything you forgot. All right, now we've got reference cards. Got two copies on coded cardstock, double sided. One side has the one for each player, obviously, and then one has, side has the sequence of play, battle rating summary, HQ removal check table, tactical position determination, attack results table, and the reverse has the terrain effects chart. I like the look of the terrain so far. I think the maps are going to be really cool. Very period evoking. Then we have a single sided. Yeah, single sided coated cardstock. Uh, remaining moves, attacks, and then based on the map, the timelines for each map. Which is interesting that they didn't put them on the map themselves. That would be the, the norm. But then you get the remaining moves and attacks for the Confederates and the Union. And again, those are single side. Those are going to set off to the side of the map. And then we've also got, let's see what we got going here. We have, we have a Union off-map display covering these areas, Union camps. So this is obviously for the Frederick, Fredericksburg and Chancellorsville game map, as you can see here. And then these hexes can travel off here. So I guess you maybe just lay this under the map and add this little extra, little extra oomph for off map. But that'll obviously be as explained in the special rules. So that's pretty cool. And that's single side. Now we've got our counters. And there are only two sheets of counters. So there's not a counter dense game or it is a very, very, uh, the reusable counters between, but we will see. So we'll look at counter sheet one. 
First, obviously, get the Union and the Conf uh, excuse me, the Union and the Confederacy, and then we've got some stuff like fieldworks, some generic counters, fieldworks. We've got our larger counters here. I would say they are about uh, I want to say five eighths of an inch, perhaps, maybe nine sixteenths, and then we've got the smaller counters that are about half inch counters. These are not pre-rounded. They will they're you know, attached on a sprue, so you'll have to punch them out and then round them with the Oregon Laminations Deluxe 2.5 millimeter Deluxe Corner Rounder, the correct tool for the job. And normally, if you only use half inch counters, you wouldn't want to use 2.5 millimeter, but anything above two point, anything above half inch, you'd want 2.5 millimeter, and it works great for the for the half inch counters too. So you only need one really, um, but that's a that's an optional. Just don't hack them up with a blade. <laughs> So, uh, in reference to what I was saying, I missed the text here. So, here's the Chickamauga counters for the Confederacy and for the Union. Here's the Chancellorsville. Here's the Spotsylvania. So, they're actually grouped pretty nice where they'll allow you to. And here's the smaller ones for Spotsylvania, Chancellorsville, Chickamauga. And here's our must attack markers, turn markers as well. It's interesting, they give you multiple turn markers. Uh, one for each map. So you can store uh, with those baggies, you can actually store all your Spotsylvania counters together with a turn counter and then pull them out for the game. So that's pretty cool. They seem to be really well registered, at least in this copy. So there's the back side of those counters. And then counter sheet two it covers Fredericksburg, Wilderness, Chattanooga. And we have pontoon bridges, we have casualties, uh, entrenchments, we got Fort Negley, Fort Wood, Warfield Works, counters, of course Robert E. Lee, Bragg. So yeah, so they've got it subdivided here because like here's Wilderness and here's Fredericksburg, but there's the Lee counter for Fredericksburg and then there's the Lee counter for Wilderness. And then again, more of the half inch counters. Cool, so only two, two sheets of counters, easy to, easy to sort through and store. And then we have our, and we have our maps. There are three map sheets. They are single sided, as you can see. And we will unfold each one of those and take a look at them. All right, we'll start looking here at the Rebel Fury Fredericksburg Chancellorsville map. Now these are, this is an eight panel, uh, GMT map, but they're, they are paper, right? So obviously you're going to want to try to get them to lay flat or use plexiglass to put on top to hold the creases down. Um, very good quality. GMT makes very good quality paper maps though. So uh, you probably already have plexiglass around if you play those. Uh, nice artwork. Uh, very vintage looking. So eight, eight panel is going to be 22 by 34 roughly and this one sits uh, in portrait mode let me take a little closer look here at the details there's the Rapidian Rapidan River the Rappahannock River coming down the side we've got our direction indicator there north is kind of diagonal very clearly numbered very easy to read the numbers. Little towns, forests, rivers, streams, roads. So that is a yeah, look here at these. This is the uh, in the Fredericksburg Chancellorsville map. All right, so now we're looking at Chickamauga and Chattanooga, and all our ridges here. So here's. Here's Chattanooga, there's the Tennessee River flowing through. I-24 hasn't been uh, built yet. Still got about 100 years to go. So here's Graysville, here's, oh, what do we got here? Peavine Ridge, Missionary Ridge, Pigeon's Roost, and a lot of obviously the, the, the beginning of the Smoky Mountains. Uh, and all those ridges and valleys. So it's going to be a tough one to fight there. There is the uh, 
Ultua. The railroad. Missionary Ridge. Ooh, tough terrain there. Tough terrain. Yep, here's the Wilderness Spotsylvania map. And again, all three of the maps do run in a portrait mode. So they are very, uh, you know, reaching away from the player. So the solo player is going to obviously want to turn it sideways. But this one's kind of got some overlap. We got the uh, Rapidan River here, the Rappahannock. Little Grove, Laurel Hill, a little mountain here. The Poe River. Runs on day way down here. So again, that is a look at the wilderness Spotsylvania map. A lot of rivers through this one. Little creeks, rivers, Massaponix River, and then roads, obviously. Mary's Heights. Marie's Heights. All right, so let us put these away and recap everything you get in the box. So if you pick up a copy of GMT's and Mark Herman's Rebel Fury Battles of the American Civil War Volume 1, you're going to get those three maps that we just took a look at. You're going to get two sheets of counters, mostly 5 sixteenths or, excuse me, uh, mostly 5 eighths or 9 sixteenths and a few half inch counters in there. You can get that one off-board, off-map Union display chart for the Fredericksburg and Chancellorsville. You're going to get the remaining moves, attacks, and the time time tracks for the various uh, battles. You're going to get two copies of the player reference sheet with terrain guide on the back. The 24-page rules of play booklet and the 24-page playbook which gives the sp uh, scenario specific rules for each battle. A bag of bags to help you store your counters. Three dice, two ten-sided, and one custom six-sided die. And that is everything in Rebel Fury, Battles of the American Civil War, designed by Mark Herman, brought to you by GMT Games. This is volume one. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!